So I'm going to share a little story with you. You might be able to relate to this. This vacuum is one I bought from Home Depot for the shop. We used to have carpet in here before I put down the Swiss tracks. Walking through Home Depot, I saw this vacuum. I've never bought a vacuum before until the day I bought this. And it was out on the podium for 29 bucks. I thought that was an absolute steal. I don't know what vacuums cost. I saw it and I was like, I gotta have it. It's a 12 amp. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's automatic height adjust. Again, breeze, bagless. That's gotta be good. 29 bucks, I bought it. Brought it back to the shop. Vacuumed the carpet, which is still under the Swiss tracks. It's like that weird blue indoor outdoor carpet. It did a great job, I was so impressed. I went back and bought another one and gave it to my wife because our first vacuum is one that somebody donated to us and it didn't really do a very good job. In fact, some could say it sucked. Anyway, 29 bucks, I thought that was a steal. Took it to my wife, she vacuumed with it, she seemed happy with it, she didn't complain about it. And it wasn't until a few years later, she said, that vacuum's terrible, it just really is. I use my friend's vacuum and it's so much better. Well, I used it the other day and I tried to vacuum out the AC vent, you know, the dust that collects, I changed the filter. It was so bad, I had to hold the vacuum up in the air like this with one hand and use the wand in the other. I mean, this vacuum isn't very heavy, but it's still kind of a pain and my wife wasn't that excited about it. But I was like, it can't be that bad, it's not a car. Why would you improve it? It's just, it's there, it's just a, an object. I got this chick to come over and start vacuuming for us. She's gonna come over whenever I call her. She's gonna vacuum, no more vacuum. Dyson, Cintiq. It's the only vacuum with no filters, wash or replace strong suction extra tools, and this thing looks cool. So, I don't know if this is good or bad. It's the most expensive vacuum I think I have ever seen. I would have thought I was out of my mind. I still think I'm out of my mind to buy this. It's got a ball. It's got these little things here. So a free piece of advice I'm gonna give you here, guys. Don't buy your wife a vacuum or a blender or a kitchen object for birthday, Christmas, anniversary, Valentine's Day. Buy it for no reason whatsoever. It'll go down so much better, trust me. I've been married for 19 years. I know what I'm doing in some aspects. So Dyson vacuum, this should be good. Hopefully she's happy. I'll circle back around and let you know what she thinks. I'm not gonna film it and take it home and, and try and get her to be excited about vacuum in the house. But So some of the guys that won the pen holders shipping them out, two of them are already out. There's one more going right now. This one is for Jacob Ruffin. Put a few extra little things in the box. That was Esther's pick. And Nate O'Reilly, that one is shipping out too. So hopefully you guys get those. If you do, put them up on social media, hashtag LHT performance. LHT TLC, whatever, let us know that you're finding the stuff and you enjoy it and the extra little things that we give you. So thanks for entering that competition. We may do another one in the future, but for the 100,000 subscriber, we're definitely gonna do something big. All right, so if you saw this manifold in one of the past episodes. All right, so another intake manifold just came in. This time it is a B18B. It's ready to ship out, look how pretty that looks i think he's going to be excited to get this this is a b18b manifold and of course it's got the lht in the cooler option and of course the port work we port these taper them uh, port match it to fit the gasket but taper them into the plenum so we're actually getting more airflow the smoother we can get the air to exit the plenum and through the port obviously the better and the smoother it will be uh more of a like a pretty satin finish on the top uh this is for a couple of reasons one it looks nice and two it's easy for you to maintain back in the day we did offer a polished version and it seemed like a good idea until i actually had one on my car and then to try and keep that up was a pain and it was very difficult to get back in there you know you got the fuel rail around here trying to you know maintain it to look reasonable it just it was more of a pain i didn't want to deal with it and i didn't want my customers to deal with it so by putting a brushed finish on it we actually have a uh, electric uh, it's like an abrasive brush but it puts the uh, the 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 marks this way it's almost like a satin brushed finish well it's easy to replicate with scotch bright you can use uh, dry scotch bright soap and water and scotch bright keep your marks going this way uh, wash it off, let it dry, and it looks good. It's easy to replicate, it's easy to keep it looking good. So the S-Tube on the B18B, 
and the single cam. I'm not sure if it's the same part. Somebody asked me that and I don't know. I haven't put them side by side. It looks very similar. Well, this is one that we've cut and modified. We basically took some of the shaping out of here. This has two really distinctive 90 degree bends like this. You can kind of see how I took some of that out. I actually cheated the bend, relaxed it. It's not cheated, it's relaxed. This came up almost straight. It came out to parallel with this flange here. And then same again here, this went back to a 90. So what we tried to do is almost take some of the shape out of it with without disrupting it too much because it does change the throttle body position. Quick drawing right here. This is kind of what the S-Tube did. It had two really sharp 90s and by taking almost a pie out of each one and relaxing it, we made it more of a gradual curve. It flows much better. It's still very difficult to get in here and port these things out. But as you see, kind of when you get the angle right, you can almost see through it. So the air has an actual, a smoother path. Air doesn't like to bend, especially on the intake side of a supercharger. Very sensitive when the supercharger is pulling the air. You need straighter, bigger, more direct airflow as you can. Another reason for modifying the S-Tube is not just for airflow, it's for fitment. We're actually adding a inch and a quarter to this end of the manifold and on the B18B, this actually is almost, almost about a quarter of an inch away from this. So when this attaches to the supercharger like this, this part is right up against the manifold. We have no room for a tank. So by basically changing this angle and bringing this forward about an inch and a half, it gives us room for that end tank uh, plus we reshape that end tank right there to give us a bit more room. So this one's ready to go. I'm gonna clean it, ship it out, uh, inform the customer it's on its way, um, and he should be happy. He's gonna be ready to go. All right, so I have been asked about the heat exchangers and how the whole system works. We don't sell a heat exchanger kit now. Uh, it was difficult to make a kit that would be universal, but fit all the different uh, vehicles. So. We decided not to sell it as a kit, but all this stuff is available. So a quick drawing, how you would set this up. You've got the manifold here. This is the way I used to set our kit. So we put a heat exchanger here. The lower hose on the heat exchanger, we would feed the pump. The pump likes to be gravity fed, and this would just work because you'd be able to put this pump kind of behind the bumper uh, on the driver's side, kind of put a, a, a bent hose, like a pre formed hose so you can kind of rotate that around the side feed the manifold on the back side of the manifold if you do choose to do a reservoir that needs to be on the highest point but that would be a reservoir and then feed back into the heat exchanger the reason you put the pump at the lowest point is so it always has access to water these obviously once you get an air pocket in there they don't pump so heat exchanger there is a bunch of them out there i've used this style before i used to use a real expensive one back in the day and then customers would often supply their own. I've used this kind. They're on eBay for 130 bucks. I've seen them cheaper. Just look around. You don't want to have a heat exchanger too thick. Some of the ones on the market that are three inches thick. Even though they look like they would work, they're too thick. They're not effective as a thinner one. The air doesn't pass through quite as well. Then on the water pump, there is a million pumps out there. This is the one that we had the best luck with. This is the Bosch. And again, it has the three quarter inch in and out, just like our inner cooler. This is the part number right here. See, this is on Amazon for $102. I've seen them cheaper than that. Now, this plug here, if I can get a shot of it, it's on this end. That is a OBD-1 injector plug. It'll fit there. That little tab, depending on your plug, you might have to take a little Dremel and take that tab out there. And an OBD-1 plug will fit that. It is marked on the case positive and negative you can actually see it in this picture obviously make sure it's the right way around if not it won't pump effectively and there is brackets available for this whether you use a uh, a hose clamp with rubber in it or they actually make a bracket for this but this pointed this way this is the inlet this is the outlet this is positioned just like i showed in our little crude drawing here but that is one of the most effective ways to do it and the hose three quarter inch hose, water hose, clear hose, whichever you want to use, as long as it is, uh, you know, a decent, don't run silicone hose because it tends to pinch. It doesn't like to curve, but a good quality rubber hose, and that is your heat exchanger kit. That'll work very well. Heat exchanger, which is like a radiator, bigger is better. 
Obviously it has to fit the car if you get the right style. It looked like a front mount. It will look pretty cool, but don't get one of these three inch thick ones. I see them around on eBay and they're not the right ones. This works pretty good. If you type in water to air, there is a whole bunch. This one with the double end light, this one's really heavy. I don't know who makes it. A customer brought us one of those. It didn't work very well. I mean, it worked, but it was very heavy. It had this seam here and it looked like it was welded very crude. Uh, this style I've used before. Um, again, just search around. There is a bunch on there. If you can fit, this one is a good one too, but it's very tall. It might not fit. Uh, this same kind, inlet and outlet are on opposite ends. It doesn't really make a difference. It has a cap here. You're not going to be concerned with the cap. Uh, this is another one comes with fans. These fans are not going to work. They're no good. Uh, this is another one of the PLMs. Look around, take some measurements, see what you can make fit. But heat exchanger is something that you're going to have to provide, same as the pumps. Maybe in the future we may see if we can do a buy-in with pumps and offer it, see if we can save you guys some money. But for right now, we're going to concentrate on just keeping up with the manifolds and making the manifolds perfect and get those done and shipped out to you guys. So hopefully you are finding this information useful. If you are, don't forget, give it a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. More things coming for the Jackson in a cooler soon. We're developing a couple of parts that are going to make it easier for the B-Series. So stay tuned for that. And as a side note, my wife loved the vacuum. I guess in the vacuum world, that was a good one. So big thumbs up on that a couple of brownie points i think so like i say on all the videos don't forget enjoy your cars